I'm Jens Beller from Meeting C++ here and I have uh, prepared a small interview with my two keynote speakers, Scott Myers and um, Hamid Kaiser. And um, we are just finished the conference and now everything is over, we are a bit relaxing. And um, so I would just like to talk a bit about C++ with you. Um, a YSD book has, uh, there's a new book from, um, from Scott and um, we just saw the, the last keynote, the closing keynote from Hartmut, who talked about um, parallelism and concurrency in C++. And so I'd like to start uh, to talk about, um, with, with Scott, about um, the, the motivation to, to write this new book. Okay. Um, you know, people had been asking for me to write some more about effective C++ ever since okay. C++ 11 came out. And they wanted a fourth edition of Effective C++. And the, the problem was I didn't want to write a fourth edition because I limit books to no more than 300 pages. Because I don't think it's good for authors or for people to have these very thick books. Um, it's hard for authors to write, hard for people to read. But the problem was most of what was in Effective C++ was still valid. But there was all this new information for C++ 11 and then later C++ 14 that needed to be added. So at some point I said, you know, what I can do is I can write a book that's just about the new stuff in C++ 11. And once I made that decision, then it was pretty easy to say, okay, great, now I know I can keep the book to a reasonable size and still address the kinds of questions that people wanted me to answer. And so that was sort of how things got rolling. Great. And now we finally have your print version, mm -hmm. which is available soon. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. And so, um, you too, by the way. <laughs> I, I saw your keynote. Your keynote was was really great, and I found it very bold from you that you also addressed uh, the issues with with um, doing materials for the modern age and, and you know, books and presentations mm -hmm. and recording and um, doing this on on a C plus plus conference. It was really really nice. So, um, what was your motivation behind your keynote? I guess what I wanted to do was, was get across two things. One of them was I wanted to explain how I go about trying to figure out what useful guidelines are. And in particular in the keynote, I wanted to give one specific example that turned out differently from the way I expected mm -hmm. due to some technical issues. But I feel really strongly that if you're trying to, if you're trying to tell programmers what to do, which is fundamentally what I do, I run around telling people what to do, then you need to have a persuasive techno technical argument. But you also need to have a good way of presenting the technical argument so that people are likely to understand it and to find it interesting enough to listen to in the first place. And so I think that you need to have good content, but you need to have good presentation as well. And especially as more and more stuff is available in video form on the internet, I felt that I really needed to address the fact that there's a different way of preparing material for doing that. Um, I was actually very interested to see in your keynote the way that you um, highlighted certain kinds of code you wanted to talk about or you introduced it in, in various ways mm -hmm. because that works really well in video form. Yes, yes. Um, it works well live, it works well remotely, mm -hmm. it works well if it's recorded, and I think that's a lot of stuff that, that people well, forget about. Well, well, I have to admit that some of the things uh, in the presentation I added after your keynote yesterday oh, really? but because I started to think about, okay, how, how can you can you apply these, these things Scott was mentioning? Mm -hmm. and, and Highlighting things just old font and in different and mm -hmm. letting it slide in so you can highlight that nicely. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that worked out very nicely. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that which brings us to your keynote. Mm -hmm. okay. Which um, the very first thing for this conference which was in place was uh, that Hartmut agreed to do the keynote and then I had to plan everything else around this keynote. And so um, your, your main topic and your main work is currently um, parallelism and concurrency with, with the framework you wrote and the synodization behind it mm -hmm. and the committee work. So, um, well, we, we try not to do concurrency, as, as I mentioned in the keynote. The, the main thing we want to focus is to uh, enable the programmer to uh, use parallelism and to create parallelism in the code that the programmer is writing without running into concurrency issues. Because concurrency is what's hindering us uh, to write massively parallel code. Because it's difficult to reason about, it's uh, 
people are scared because they are afraid that they get it wrong. Like, like Christoph in, in his, his talk said today, when I'm looking for bugs and for race conditions, what I do, I look at where are the mutexes in the code because he knows, okay, there's some bug. <laughs> it's the easiest way for him to find the, the mm -hmm. bugs. Um, so the goal is to, to provide ways, high level, higher, well, not high level, higher level interfaces than we have today uh, um, and some use pa usage pattern around those interfaces to enable massive parallelism for the average programmer without triggering some um, rejection or fear or, or, or so it has to be natural you know you have to, you, you you want to express your algorithm in parallel you want to use the machines we have today um, so yeah that's that's what we what we do mainly and uh, so the goal of, of what we do is to enable scalable applications because only that way we can utilize the machines we have. And HPX, the library we, we develop, is really just yeah, a side effect of, of, of that work we do. It's, it's just the, the platform we, we implement to, to try out, to test our, our uh, uh, findings and, and to, to play around and to come up with, with ways to, to do that. Because designing interfaces, you, you know that, is, mm -hmm. is a very difficult thing. And and one thing we discovered while doing that is <clears throat> that actually unintentionally, I believe unintentionally, the standard already has or will have soon all the necessary or a large part of the necessary facilities enabling that, what, what, what we think about. And that's what I wanted to convey today, the keynote, that the standard is already there, even if the people contributing those features from the different ends didn't mean to go in that direction, mm -hmm. but the sum of the features we have already enables the massive parallelism we need in the future. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy about the standard going in that direction. Do you think it's likely that the pieces will be largely in place for C++ 17? <clears throat> uh, well, the committee decided um, mainly they, they changed the mode of operation a bit for, away from that monolithic standard, which comes out well now every three years, mm -hmm. um, but doesn't give you the ability to uh, experiment. To you have to set it in stone when you start right. it, and that's why the committee switched to a mode um, of having working groups for different topics. Uh, Twelve or fourteen working groups now, right. and um, the mode or the, the documents they produce are not things which go into the standard, but they produce so-called technical specifications which is a standard light in a way. Mm -hmm. It's non-normative, so the, the compiler runners don't have to implement that. But uh, as the situation shows, and, and with, this, with the standardization um, implementation of the standard in, in the compilers, it's obvious that compiler writers will strive for that and will implement it very quickly. Um, and that allows to test out things in, in practice without having to put it into standard because putting it in a standard means you have to support it for the next 50 years, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. But these technical specifications give, give some kind of means to, to gather feedback and to change it and to reissue a new technical specification and iterate that and in the end get something which can be put confident with confidence in, in, into, the, into the standard. And that's important. And many things I presented today were taken from, from these, from these right. uh, technical specifications. Mm -hmm. so I think that's very good. Yeah. It's really good to build it on the experience with TR1. Yes. It worked out as well. Well, it's it just a different name for TR. Right. right. It was called technical, what's TR? Technical yeah. report. Report. And now it's called technical specification. Right. So mm -hmm. it goes through international ballot anyway. Mm -hmm. And the two technical specifications I mentioned today, the concurrency and the pro parallelism technical specification one through if I'm not mistaken through a um, international ballot it has to go through an international ballot twice mm -hmm. first for the draft and then for the final yes. document mm -hmm. and uh, the will goes through a final uh, ballot uh, soon probably after the next committee meeting mm -hmm. so there are some finalization for so the 17 uh, shape by next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, to answer your question, it will not be in C17, but it will be published when C17 will, will be available. Mm -hmm. It will 
is start as an extension. As it is. Yes, so it's currently available as an extension when this was 2015 in the theory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, probably we'll, we'll, we'll soon have a playing implementation and a TCC implementation. You, you mean the await stuff? Yes. The other things are being implemented already for, for playing a GCC. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, at least to me, the wait is an interesting part. And everything else is, is a machinery which makes it possible to have it. Well, I, I wouldn't like to miss the power of algorithms. Definitely not. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, True. I, and and uh, futures without the extensions of, of the dot then and the wait all and uh, the one all and the one any, futures without those extensions are useless. I agree. So it, it's all, all of these things we, we touched on today are very important. Mm -hmm. But the wait is certainly. Touch because it adds something to the language we hadn't even remotely before. It, it, it adds something where, where you can essentially extend the compiler to do what you want to do. Mm. So it's really cool. Mm. One, one question I would just have for you, Harpen, is um, I know that you were um, you were one of the starting authors for the Spirit, which yes. is a great successful library. Mm -hmm. And you are also now one of the main architects of HPX. So, um, what is your after what? Uh, what are your your key points as a software architect? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, all my life, for a long, long time, I always had the goal to write software which others can use to do useful stuff. So I always wanted to create tools for others to use. And that's the theme I, I actually through all, all my software engineering. Um, and that kind of goes along with designing APIs. Because when you write libraries which are have an API which is kind of awkward to, use, awkward mm -hmm. to use or so, nobody will use it. Um, and um, so API design is definitely a very important part of that. Uh, with HPX, I just got lucky, as I said. Many things we, we have is already in the standard. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm in the standardization committee is just to make sure that the remaining things just end up there as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we can use HPX to, to do these things we want to do. So API design is actually the major part of, of, of software design. And, and what it's, a, it's a very difficult and, and long winding process. and Scott makes a living of that because people don't get it right mm. or have contradictions in there and say, oh, in, th in this case we do it that way, but surprise, surprise, in that case we do it differently. Mm. So it's very difficult to have a homogeneous, very, very solid, usable and well, natural interface mm. uh, to, to do programming. So that, that's actually my, my focus. Everything else falls out of that um, because the API kind of defines what, what, the, what the semantics of the underlying functionality is. As long as you're able to kind of reflect the things you want mm -hmm. to expose in, in your API. So API is definitely one of the key points that I'm, I'm interested in. And that was a spirit. Uh, the spirit, uh, the case. There are many things where are designed by Joel, Joel de Guzman, mm -hmm. the main author of, of spirit. Um, that was uh, for me, more of a learning experience as uh, as a, a me pushing things. So many many of the ideas there came from Joel, and I learned a lot of that. But with HPX, we 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 had several iterations for the API, and after we realized, hey, we actually can use the standard as it is. That task was solved as well. Things worked out very nicely. One important thing for me is that keynote speakers also attend the conference, mm -hmm. and are part of the conference, and are available to to the audience. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to ask you, what was your favorite talk which you attended? Um, it, it would actually be yours, to be honest. <laughs> though, but I, I, I really, I really uh, thought you hit all the right notes without keynotes. <laughs> with, 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 without the keynotes. Um, the, the, I guess the one that comes to mind um, was the one on limiting express um, limiting uh, or 
basically getting control over error messages coming from templates. Okay. And I, I don't remember the speaker's name, unfortunately, but... Um, I think it's Roland Fock. Um, I, I honestly don't remember, but what I like about it is... I do, I know. Uh, it's your conference, you would know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it's the kind of thing where, I mean, you, you read the title and right away you know that it's, it's, it's an important mm -hmm. problem that needs to be addressed, and then a lot of the stuff that he talked about I had never seen before because I've actually spent a lot of time in the template yeah. metaprogramming community. Um, although, interestingly, it, it dovetails really nicely with your emphasis on API design mm -hmm. because he talked a whole... Did you go to this talk by any chance? No, I haven't seen that. Okay, so, but, you know, it was very much a focus on we don't just want an error message. We want to get a very specific error message that will allow a casual user of the API to know what the problem is and won't bother them with a lot of other stuff that they don't want to know anything about. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought it, it attacked a real problem um, mm -hmm. that is likely to continue. Because um, I actually asked him about whether Concepts Lite would solve that problem, and he did not think that it would solve that specific kind of problem. It addresses part of it. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed that talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, for me, it was not a single talk, frankly, which stuck out. I found it to be interesting and very... Um, um, fitting for the conference uh, and from, from the talk selection you, you had that there was a, a very nice theme in the, in the conference talking about parallelism. I mean, sure, it's almost obvious because everybody's kind of concerned and everybody, it's, a, hot topic. it's mm -hmm. a very hot topic, but I found it to be very important to have different perspectives which surprisingly all ended up with, with some consensus because mm -hmm. everybody had futures in there and everybody was talking about async in, in some mm -hmm. way and, and everybody was implicitly saying, hey, don't touch mutexes. Mm -hmm. or, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, so that was kind of very interesting for me. I, I, I didn't expect that. And, and the fact, I was very surprised when I was asking who actually was doing multi-threaded programming today that almost everybody raised their hand. So there is a lot of uh, things are going on in the community and it's much wider in already in, in, in use um, than I thought. On the other hand, that raises the importance of providing better features because everybody who raised their hand is in pain, in utter pain. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to relieve that. So, so that, that's my impression. I very much like the conference, and I would like to thank you for, for pulling all that together. It's, it's really a marvelous, marvelous job. You, you, did, a, you did an unusually good job, actually. It's, it's, this is a very nice conference. Thank you. Uh, I enjoyed it too. It was a bit of work, and I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, you work all year for two and a half days, mm -hmm. and that's it. So. Feels to me now a bit weird that it's like you know it's, that's it for this year. I mean, you know it's like um, for the spiel is nach dem spiel. So you know when the game is over, the new game already you know is this on. So uh, 2015 already I have the first planning and I'm thinking of it, but I'm trying to to get my, my head now clear and just have uh, enjoying the conference was was very easy for me. Um, I liked everything and it was really cool. To have both of you, thank you for the keynotes, and maybe one or both of you want to return as a speaker at some day. And um, I'd love to if the opportunity arises. Sure. Um, Next year in December in Berlin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs>